Hi everybody, this is Scott in the old curiosity shop and I have a Saturday thrift haul for you. Now we had a lot of snow last night uh, and so I wasn't really sure if I was going to make it out this morning. Well, not because it was a lot of snow on the ground, but it was so cold and uh, icy and there was a lot of snow to scrape off cars and things. But, um, oh well, you know, I thought there are some diehards that really go to these flea markets no matter what. And so... I decided, okay, I'll try it, and I'm glad I did because uh, I found some good stuff this morning. So, uh, but before I show you everything, I want to say um, thank you to all my new subscribers, and um, I will tip my hat to Jeffrey at Real Nifty Vintage for sending a lot of you in my direction, and I really appreciate that. Um, I love watching other people's videos and learning, and I'm so glad that uh, folks have decided to watch and. Uh, so welcome to my channel thank you so much so let's see what we have here today uh, right here in the front uh, salt and pepper shakers and these two guys uh, let's see they are made in Japan there's a little bit of a remnant of a sticker left uh, so I don't know exactly there were so many of those companies that made this stuff in Japan and I don't know which one it is uh, but two little roosters, I'm guessing from the 60s, and they must have had a hard night last night in the barn because they're little, I don't know what these little red hats are that they have on their heads. I, I was not raised on a farm, so I don't know my chicken part, rooster parts. But um, there's a lot of missing red paint up here on their little, little uh, pompadours or whatever you call those things on their heads. <laughs> but... Uh, hopefully someone will adopt these and put them on a kitchen shelf somewhere so we'll get those roosters out of the way and sticking with salt and pepper shakers here are two little kitties which are cute we'll move these up front um, and these are both uh, marked clearly on the bottom and that is uh, it's either a V or a U and I can't I think it's Ukago Ukog Co uh, ceramics in Japan and they're both marked and these are cute uh, I was surprised that there weren't any chips or any cracks on these little kitties salt and pepper shakers oh uh, I'm sorry the two roosters were uh, 25 let's see they were 55 mm, 50 cents each so one dollar for the two roosters and the two kitties were also 50 cents each so it was one dollar for the two of them And so they're really cute. So we'll move those two out of the way. This I spotted a mile away. You know, after you d mess around with Fire King long enough, you can spot it. You don't even have to pick it up and look at the bottom, but we'll see the bottom just so you can see Fire King anchor hawking. I didn't do any research on this. I don't. I know Fire King put all did all kinds of uh, promotional work for different companies, and I guess this is a series that they had on birds probably in the 60s uh, that says Cardinal uh, it was just this one and it was a dollar and I don't know what they sell for here we have some little uh, P 
people from a uh, little uh, from a train set and these are from the 1930s or 40s you can tell there are three sizes these two guys right here I think are the G G skip uh, I'm sorry uh, HO scale or O scale O scale O gauge <laughs> and then there are uh, then he is a smaller he's in the middle and then the little ones I think are called H H O gauge uh, they are some of them are marked on the bottom and some are not the paint is really good on these and the toy train collectors really know what to look for these were all uh, I think these guys were two dollars each and the rest of them were like a dollar each and I'm gonna sell some of them and some of them I'm gonna keep because I have a, a train display that I put up at Christmas time I have my dad's old uh, Lionel train from when he was a little boy um, I think he received that train set in 1951 or 1952 and sometimes I get pieces to stick with my dad's train set that I still put up every Christmas. All right, moving over here is Hazel Atlas Crinoline. 20 years ago, 25 years ago, nobody was really paying much attention to these, but they sell pretty well now. Uh, this t uh, pink, mid-century pink, and they are marked Hazel Atlas on the bottom. Everybody knows that HA. I guess I don't have to show you. It's right there. HA. And there were three, uh, three cereal bowls and um, four dinner plates. The dinner plates right now are selling for almost ten dollars each. So are the little bowls. So uh, I paid a dollar fifty per plate and a dollar fifty per bowl. So I should be able to get about oh thirty-five to forty dollars for the plates and maybe twenty-five bucks for the bowls. This is made by the Indiana Glass Company. It is a chip and dip set, probably from the 1960s. And uh, it appears to have never been used. What's really amazing that all these, there are no chips around any of these points. Uh, it's not marked, but I do happen to know that Indiana Glass made this. And uh, there are a lot of places on the uh, perimeter of this where it could have been chipped, but it was never chipped. So I'm happy about that. And this was a steal of a deal. It was only one dollar. So I did okay with that. Back here is a Kali. I don't know anything about him other than he was made in Brazil. I don't know much about items made in Brazil. It's the first one I've ever seen, but he's in really great shape. And I paid one dollar for him. I think he's a Kali. So I'll put him in with my other... Uh, Feet, uh, my other uh, canine collectibles. Back here is a mid-century uh, fluorescent desk lamp. It's got a little bit of paint loss on the front, which I'm not happy about, but someone could tone that down a little bit if they wanted to with something, but I don't try to touch things up. Uh, I don't see any maker's mark on it. It does have that sort of classic industrial look of the 19, late 50s into the 60s. I didn't have to rewire it, the cord was good, it works. And this, uh, I think I paid uh, $5 for that. And I'll probably try to sell it for about mm, 30, maybe 35, we'll see what happens. Um, back here is a set of one, two, three, four, five Christmas glasses. I've seen these many times, I've bought and sold these before. I don't know who, I'm not sure what that uh, mark is on the bottom because I can't see it. If you can see it better than I can, maybe you can tell me what that is. But these look to be probably late 50s or early 60s. Uh, this is a really nice 1920s lamp. I would put this manufactured somewhere between 1920 and 1930. Um, I love the detail on this. So can you see the face right here and back here and on the very back 
the wire comes out. It's almost like his mouth is open and the electric cord comes out of the back. Um, and I'm not sure what this is. I haven't really, uh, I think it has a patina on it. Uh, so I don't think it's brass or bronze. I think it's just a, uh, it's, it's a strong metal. It's not a pot metal or a monkey metal, but it does have its, this is its original 1920s finish on it with an old socket that works and a harp so that you can put a shade on it. Um, something that collectors look for when they uh, deal with old, oh, I never even noticed right there is like a deer head. And that's like a, I don't know, like an ancient, ancient Roman's head or something like that. Uh, sorry, I had to turn the music down. What do you notice about this pull chain? That is an acorn. That's original. So this is this date. This pull chain and the acorn on the bottom dates it uh, back to the 20s. And collectors are really picky. Those who are purists want to see that old-fashioned acorn on the pull, as opposed to something modern. So it's it's nice to have that on there. Uh, that lamp, I did pay ten dollars for that. And uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to sell it for yet. I picked up another dresser uh, tray, a really nice one, with uh, you know for a lady's dresser. And that was only a couple bucks, probably from the 1940s, maybe the early 50s. And then I happened to find, look over, and I saw these two boxes, and you can, I'll let you, this one's upside down, so I can't do anything about that, because it's been opened upside down, but I'll read it to you. It says, Fire King 12-piece bake and serve set, copper tint dinnerware, Anchor Hocking Glass Corporation, Lancaster, Ohio. And then this one over here says, 11-piece Sierra Wear, Fire King, Bacon Serve, Set, Anchor Hocking. Now, I saw these boxes, and of course, I made a beeline over to this guy's table. It was freezing out there. There was ice and snow everywhere. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I said, could it be? Oh, yes, please let it be. Let me open these boxes and find the original contents. Please tell me that it's not full of baby clothes and Tupperware. What do you think? Should I open these boxes and show you or make you stay tuned for the next video? I wouldn't do that. I will open these boxes and I will show you what's inside. So let me slide this one over here. Okay. This is so exciting. Look at this. It hasn't been out of the box. It's all original. With the original sticker on it. I don't know why I'm getting quiet and dramatic. Uh, <laughs> Fire King Copper Tint Ovenware with the Good Housekeeping Seal. Now I'm going to come back to this copper tint. A minute. Don't break it. Don't break it. Okay, so we see over here is the casserole with the glass lid. And then underneath here, look at this. There are the, uh, the French casseroles still sitting inside their original paper. And look at how brittle, look at this. I probably shouldn't be doing that. That's amazing. And then over here, the little uh, custard cups or ramkins or whatever you call those dudes, there are uh, four of those so it's all here it is a complete set still in the box somebody received this as a wedding gift or something and it doesn't appear as though they've ever taken it out of the box oh my goodness I feel like I'm I feel like I've just broken into King Tut's tomb <laughs> Boy, I need to do something more exciting with my life if this is what my biggest thrill is. Well, this isn't my biggest thrill, but that's cool. 
Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. Um, I learned something. I have always simply been calling this peach luster. And I think most of us have, right? Peach luster, peach luster. You hear that all the time. But notice nowhere on here does it say peach anything. It's called Fire King Copper Tint. Um, I did go on the internet <clears throat> and I see where folks who know, and now I know, but I didn't know before, that this is, even though other companies refer to it as Peach Luster, Fire King referred to this color as uh, Copper Tint. So, from now on, when I list things like this, I'm going to say peach luster slash copper tint so that I'm accurately describing it as it was described by the company, by the manufacturer. That I never knew, so I learned something from this original packing. All right, let's slide this guy back. And we'll slide this one over. Now, I thought, there's no way. They couldn't have two sets. It's not possible that there are two sets that were never opened. Oh, the suspense. You ready? You already know what's going to happen, I think. Isn't this just like... Al Capone's... What was it? Who broke into Al Capone's uh, trunk and then there was nothing in it? Do you remember that when uh, Geraldo did that? Look. Isn't this great? <laughs> it's all still in there. It hasn't been taken out. Oh my goodness. There's the pie plate. Here are the four little uh, casseroles. And then these are like the little custard cups. There's four of them in there. And then there's a false, there's another section under here. If you pull this out and there's there, the rest of it, like this big, that big casserole dish is under here. So that's underneath this, which you can't see. I don't even want to pull it out. Is, is this, is this a thrill or what? Look, it has its, Fire King. So what's interesting is the design of this, uh, the pattern of this glass is called Sierra Wear, which I never knew, but it's got the copper tint finish to it, slash peach luster. So Fire King, um, Anchor Hawking put their peach luster or copper tint finish on different styles of glass. Uh, so I really learned a lot from the original packaging and I'm just so excited to have found these all wrapped up just as they were. So we'll fold that back and then slide this back. All right, so I paid, uh, this is making a mess, all these little pieces. Uh, I paid uh, 18 no, $17.50 for each one. $17 for this box and $17 for this box. And I will probably sell the box. I'm going to sell them, you know, the two boxes, two separate uh, listings. Um, and I hope to get 45 or $50 per box that maybe that's too low. Maybe that's too high. I don't really know. I do a little more research, but it was exciting to find those two in those boxes. So I hope you enjoyed seeing those like I did. Uh, last thing I'll show you is I always stop at one thrift shop that always has like free records that you can pick up. And I did pick up a nice Christmas album of Arthur Godfrey. This is from the early, well, the mid 1950s, this LP. And the music that's playing in the background is this one meet the girls on halo records and it's just different uh female singers that were popular in the 1940s 50s this album is also from that era and these are uh those are both free so that's everything um i've got to get it listed and it will be for sale in the old curiosity shop on ebay so once again thank you to all my new subscribers i hope you enjoyed seeing everything and if you've got some suggestions um, about how I can uh, improve my videos or, you know, the things that you'd like to see, uh, please let me know. Once again, have a wonderful weekend and have a great week of thrifting and buying and selling coming up. 
Okay, this is Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying so long for now.